Ciao, bata chalam. Ciao, bata chalam. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Praise Ahaya, Alahayam, Manawa Adonu Yache Meshiaka. Hope you all are enjoying this opportunity with us as we continue learning of the righteousness of Alahaya by faith in Yache. Today we're going to look at the scriptures to understand what grace is. And we're going to start with John chapter 3, verse 16 to 20. All right, John chapter 3, verse 16. For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For Elohim sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And if you have the opportunity, please look at the video called, Are You a Believer? So you can understand what it means to actually believe on him. Right. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Elohim. We profess the name Yahche. Right. This is the name of salvation to the ends of the world. And that name only, Yahche, is whose name will save all those that believe on him and bear the fruits of the Spirit, keeping the commandments. Right. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Now, why do men hate the light of Christ? Because their deeds were evil. It's because we aren't doing right, we hate the light. But why, when the light is good for us? For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. It's because we don't want to be corrected that we resist the light of Christ. So you can see how pride keeps us away from the hope in Yahche, right. right? But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. We know the truth is Christ in us, in an honest and good heart, confessing our sins, keeping the word, and bringing forth fruits of the Spirit with patience and joy in our temptations. This type of man comes to the light of Christ for the following reason. That his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in Elohim. Coming to the light of Christ in this truth, we are meek and lowly of heart, willing to have our deeds reproved, to grow from the learning experiences, and that shows our deeds are wrought in Allah because it's humility, willing to hear correction and change. We do this because we understand the goodness of the Father, in that He had Yahche die for us while we were yet sinners. You can look at this in Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. Romans chapter 5 verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Messiah could die for the unholy. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet pure adventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But Allah commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Messiah could die for us. Now, this atonement was made for our former sins. When we look at Romans 3 and 25, whom Elohim have set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of Elohim. The belief in Christ unto life delivers us from former sins, but doesn't give us license to sin willfully. Sirach chapter 15 verse 20. He hath commanded no man to do wickedly, neither hath he given any man license to sin. Understand it. People are still dying for their sins when they don't come in truth unto Yahche. We can even look at this happening in the scriptures. After Yahche made the atonement and everything, people are still being killed for their sins. So you can understand that this grace does not give us room or justification to continue sinning. Let's look at Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. These were people that said they believe in Yahche. They were with the apostles, knew the true names and everything, yet their heart did not turn unto Allah in truth. Acts chapter 5 verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his <laughs> wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, and Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thy own? 
And after it was so, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto Elohim. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the spirit. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. In verse 7. Right. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the lamb for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of mm -hmm. Ahiah? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Notice this is the Holy Spirit. She has no pleasure in iniquity. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23, she calls unto us to turn from my iniquity and to hear her reproof. And she is described as follows. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. For into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. For the Holy Spirit of discipline would flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. I will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. So we have to understand the Holy Spirit is very sincere in righteousness. And she really wants us to do the right things and choose the ways of Ahaya. Because we see here what happens. These people died because they broke the commandments after Yahweh had made an atonement for sins. So this is scriptural confirmation that people do still perish for iniquity. Even if one says you believe on the name, but you do not come to Allah with a true heart and sincerity, striving to keep his commandments. Also, you have confirmation that he was sacrificed for our former sins, in that these people sinned willfully after coming to the knowledge of the truth. As you see the result, there remain no more sacrifice for sins. So hopefully this better helps understand his grace. All right. Then she fell down straightway at his feet and yielded up the spirit. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And a great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. That's yeah, so right. Seek your salvation with fear and trembling. Right. We look at Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Please look back at the video on Are You a Believer to understand what the truth is, what it truly means to be a believer. Now, seeing as though we don't have any more sacrifice for sins, when we truly understand and are walking in the truth, let's understand what opportunity we have while going through this growth process. Hermas, Mandate 4. Chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. I will proceed, sir, say I, to ask a further question. Speak on, saith he. I have heard, sir, say I, from certain teachers that there is no other repentance save that which took place when we went down into the water and obtained remission of, of our former sins. He saith to me, Thou hast heard well, for so it is. For he that hath received remission of sins ought no longer to sin, but to dwell in purity. But, since thou inquirest all things accurately, I will declare unto thee this also, so as to give no excuse to those who shall hereafter believe, or those who have already believed on the Lord. For they that have already believed, or shall hereafter believe, have not repentance for sins, but have only remission of their former sins. To those then that will call before these days the Lord has appointed repentance. For the Lord, being a discerner of hearts and foreknowing all things, perceived the weakness of men and the manifold wiles of the devil, how that he will be doing some mischief to the servants of Allah and will deal wickedly with them. The Lord then being very compassionate, had pity on his handiwork and appointed this opportunity of repentance. And to me was given the authority over this repentance. But I say unto you, saith he, if after this great and holy calling any one being tempted of the devil shall commit sin, 
he hath only one opportunity of repentance. But if he sin often and repent, repentance is unprofitable for such a man, for he shall live with difficulty. I say unto him, I was quickened unto life again, when I heard these things from thee so precisely. For I know that if I shall add no more to my sins, I shall be saved. Thou shalt be saved, saith he, thou and all, as many as shall do these things. It's with great love Allah Hayyam has given us this opportunity of repentance to find grace in his sight. Can you pick back up at in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 through 10 please? But Allah commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Messiah could die for us. Right, and we understand he died for our former sins from Romans 3 and 25. Continue. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Yeah. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to Allah by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Now, how were we enemies by precept? Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. And you that were sometime alienated, and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled, in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. So we see we were enemies by the wicked works of our mind. But now, being reconciled, we have the opportunity to be unblameable and unreprovable. But what is a stipulation to make it through to the end to be presented blameless? Colossians chapter 1 verse 23. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. So that's what we have to do. Yet there's more. What else do we have to do? In Romans chapter 5, verse 11. And not only so, but we also joy in Allah through our donor Yachet Meshiach, by whom we have now received the atonement. It's amazing because you have verse 11, it says, now we receive the atonement. So that shows you that Paul was teaching that through Yache we have the atonement for sins. The debate at that time was the sacrifice for sins. How do we get an atonement? And Paul was teaching in Acts 13, 39 to 40 that all men are justified through Yache, whom they could not be justified through the law of Moses. That lets you know that the debate was about the law of animal sacrifice. Right. Seeing as though Yach is the atonement here. And now that we have an atonement through him, where does that leave the law of animal sacrifice? Can you read Romans chapter 5 verse 13 please? For until the law of sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. So if there is no animal sacrifice needed anymore because of Christ, what was the purpose of the animal sacrifices? Galatians chapter 3 verse 19 Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So the sacrifices were added to the law because of the transgressions of Adam, until Christ the promised seed will come to fulfill it, suffering for our sins that all nations may be blessed. 1 Corinthians 15 and 3 For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Paul goes on to elaborate on the purpose of the sacrificial law. Can you read Romans chapter 5 verse 20 please? Moreover the law entered that the offense might abound. But why did the offense abound because of animal sacrifice? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4 for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. So not having sins taken away led to sin abounding by guilty conscience, weighing us down to stay in sin. Continue in Romans 5 and 20, please. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So how did grace abound more than sin? Can you read Romans 5 and 16, please? And not as it was by one that sinned, 
so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. So grace abounds because it covers many offenses of our former sins unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Yahweh Messiah. So one sin by Adam caused us all to die. Yet through grace for our abundance of former sins, through Christ we are given an atonement and the gift of righteousness reigning in our life as opposed to the curse of sin reigning in us and causing us to transgress the commandments. I want to touch on something real quick. Oh, before please. We go on. Sure. Uh, just like it says, and because um, you were talking about grace and how grace it reigns through righteousness, like we have to go through, right? Um, when you look in John 14 and 6, Yahshua saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by through me. The word way is uh, G3598, which means a journey. So you literally have to, to take that journey from being a sinner and then take that journey to becoming righteous. So that's what the grace is. The grace is from being a sinner to becoming righteous. The grace is the journey in between. Right. So, Just may fall and get back up. You right. might fall, but there's grace because you're walking forward. That's correct. That's a good understanding of the grace. I think that was a great uh, edification for us to know and be encouraged to continue going forward. Can you jump to Romans 5 and 21, please? That a sin hath reigned unto death. Even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahshua Mashiach Adonai. Notice the grace of the atonement and gift of righteousness only reigns through righteousness. Hence, we have to cease from sin to abide in the grace. Can you read Romans chapter 5 verse 18, please? Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men right. to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Romans 5 and 15, please. But not as the offense, so also as the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of Elohim and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahweh Mashiach, I have abounded unto many. There we see the greatness and the abundance of the grace given unto us by the one man, our Lord. Now, does this grace give us place to sin? Romans chapter 6 verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Allah forbid. That means never. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? His sincerity is wonderful. Because he said, like, he's like, think about it. Right. How shall we go sin again when we're dead to it? We just partook in Yache. We got baptized in the name. We're dead to sin. We're not serving sin anymore. The grace is through righteousness unto eternal life. The goal of righteousness is Yache for them that believe. We just got forgiven for our past sins. Like right. We go back to our past right. sins. Right. Remember we told them, how are we going to go touch the dead body, wash ourselves and go touch the dead body again? Right. That's, that's not what we're here for, brothers and sisters. Right. Continue. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Yahshua Mashiach were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Mashiach was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. No, we are baptized into his death. We take our time to understand the gospel and what we're getting involved in before baptism so that when we partake, in that with him, we're renewed and we're walking in newness of life, understanding the path that we're embarking upon. And as Zachwa mentioned, he is the way, that he is the process. And from Paul's teachings, it's through him that we are being made righteous by his obedience and him causing that obedience to flourish in us, as opposed to how sin caused the motions of sin and lust to flourish in us in our past life. Can you read Romans chapter 5 verse 19 please? For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, 
So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. And that gives you clear indication that Yahweh's atonement and the grace we are in is to make us keep the commandments. That's right. Because it says it very straightly. One man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So Adam messed up once, we all became sinners, and we continually messed up. Right. Therefore, now that Yache came and did everything right, <laughs> we ought to come and do everything right and be righteous. That's right. The apostles also encourage us unto such things. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 29, If ye know that he is righteous... Ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. 1 John chapter 3, verse 6 and 7, and verse 18 and 19. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and we assure our hearts before him. So we see righteousness and loving in deed and in truth assures our heart that we are in the truth before our Allah Hayyam. Now let's get the rest of Paul's admonitions in Romans 12 through 15 and verse 19 to see that the apostles were on the same page teaching us to refrain from sin through the grace of Allah. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Notice sin is a spirit right. that had reigned in your body. That's right. And now that you're aware of that evil spirit, let it not anymore have dominion to cause you to obey lust. That's right. Now you're aware of why you keep falling. Now, so you can fight by prayer and supplication and deeds of righteousness and bearing the fruits of the Spirit by faith in Yahweh, right. that it no longer can yield you to obey lust and transgress the commandments or not bear the fruits of the Spirit. That's exactly why he says, with men it is impossible, but with Allah I am, nothing is impossible. <laughs> because the sin plays on your conscience and pulls you back like, I can't do it, I can't overcome it. Mm -hmm. And it keeps pulling you back, but through Messiah, that's the only way you can overcome the sin. Right. That's the only way you can overcome the conscience. Right. It's amazing what he was talking about. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Amazing. So they say, don't become a tool for unrighteousness. That's right. That shows that there are entities at work. You can serve sin unto death, and that evil spirit will lead you astray, right. or you can serve the spirit of Messiah. And be led on to light. Obedience unto righteousness. Right. Is that Romans 6 and 16. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that is good. Yes, he is. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto Allah as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto Allah Now, it's interesting it said yield. You have to choose whom you will serve. You have to make a choice. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. We're no longer under the animal sacrifices that couldn't purge our conscience. We're now under the grace of Christ, wherein righteousness reigns unto life. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Allah am forbid. So you can know for surety Paul did not give consent for any person to sin. Right. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. And now... Let's do it on the other side. Let's go serve Allah Hayim with right. all our heart and give ourselves completely over to that just as we was given over to our lust. Right. We hope now that you understand the grace that we are in, the grace to strive forward in this journey to attain unto the goal, the end of the law, which is the righteousness of Yachim Mishiach. Right. We are to strive with all our heart, our soul, and all our mind that we may attain unto him. And be kept in these times. And to atone for our past sins so that it can clear our conscience of dead works and old works 
so that we can strive in that journey, pure of conscience, but focused on Messiah. Right. We have to stay grounded in the faith unto the end that we may be found unblameable and unreprovable in the Lord's sight. So we all have the same opportunity to do these things. And with that, you understand grace. All right. Chalam. Chalam.